From the campus of Volunteer State Community College, this is Inside Politics. Hi, I'm Nancy Hoskins. And I'm Jessica Moore, and thanks for joining us. Well, we are honored today to have U.S. Senator Bob Corker of Tennessee with us. As a member of the Senate Committee on Banking, Housing, and Urban Affairs, he's had a front row seat in the debate over bailouts and credit clogs. Hopefully in the next half hour, he can shed some light on this very complicated and frustrating issue. And we thank you so much for so being here with be us here. today. Thank you. thank you. Now, Senator, the economic crisis is the number one concern for most Americans right now. And unless you have a degree in finance, it's really hard to know what to do. What are you telling folks to ease their mind? Well, I, I don't know that there's much to say to ease people's minds. We're getting a lot of calls in our office, uh, people very concerned about their 401ks and other kinds of things. And I, I just, I just want to be very candid. I think we're going through some, a tough chapter in American history. There's a lot, uh, a lot of issues that we have to deal with. There have been excesses both in the private sector and in the public sector. And, uh, you know, this is going to be some tough sledding for a while. So I think from the standpoint of advice, they need to talk to people who advise them. That's not what I do. But I, I don't think that people should think that this $700 billion rescue plan is the end of the problem. I think uh, we have a lot of credit issues today. I know we're probably a month before this will actually be aired, okay, but the LIBOR today, we had a 500 basis point spread on short-term credit between banks, and, and uh, this credit, uh, the clog, as you've called it, the lack of credit in our uh, economy is, is going to create, uh, it's going to play itself out, in my opinion, in a slowing economy. So that's not, uh, I know that's not happy news. Uh, we've got a lot of tough decisions to make going forward, and certainly this rescue package was one of those. You did vote for this $700 billion rescue package. I did. And one of the things you've said, and, and I've heard, heard other people pick up on your line, mm -hmm. is that this is more about Main Street than Wall yeah. Street. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Well, I mean, you know, look, at the end of the day, the way this was uh, portrayed in the beginning was about some bailout for Wall Street. It, nothing could be further from the truth. And, matter of fact, if this was about Wall Street, the heck with it. I mean, I would not be for it. What we saw happening and what is happening, and you can talk to small businesses in the state and they will attest to this, is credit literally is frozen. I mean, people are having difficulty uh, getting credit lines. Uh, if you watch what's happening in the marketplace today, companies that rely on any type of credit, their stocks are just being cratered right now because people wonder whether they can get it. And credit is the thing, the liquidity is the thing that actually drives jobs in this country. We became concerned that Tennesseans would literally show up trying to cash payroll checks and not have the ability to even cash those because many companies operated on a line of credit where they make payroll there, they have receivables that come in, and, and it just wasn't working. And so what we've done, and I, I know that this is, uh, uh, we have allowed Treasury to go in and buy frozen assets that are on financial institutions' balance sheets at greatly discounted values, hold those, and then sell them at a time when the market improves. And, and again, this is not an expenditure where this money is gone. This is making an investment in a very discounted asset that's backed up by mortgages. I mean, this is real stuff, if you will. And what that'll do is create liquidity in the marketplace, hopefully. Uh, there's a lot of actions uh, simultaneously through the Federal Reserve, where they're, ob we're ob they're obviously buying commercial paper in the marketplace or loaning money against it. And so this is all about liquidity. And it's just like you came in today. It's a rainy day. You had traffic issues. If there had been a wreck, you'd been totally stopped. This is about trying to unclog, okay, a jam that occurs, that's occurring right now in the credit markets and is going to overwhelm Tennesseans and others if we don't solve this problem. Now, do you think folks here in Tennessee or even across the nation are going to be, have to be concerned about putting their money in local banks? Well, one of, part, one of the things we did, that's a great question, uh, one of the things we did as part of this bill was raise the insurance level on deposits from 100000 to 250000 okay? Um, I, I have to tell you that uh, several months ago, as I saw what was happening, I, I made sure that that what, you know, what resources I had were in, insured deposits. So I think what we did as part of this bill was to, to help stabilize that and to make sure that people weren't unnecessarily withdrawing funds from banks 
Uh, we put in place that additional insurance, and, and I think people are able to do that also with securities and other places. But uh, that's a very important question and one that uh, hopefully uh, something that we staved off, if you, if you will, as part of this bill. Last spring, you actually opposed the $168 billion economic stimulus package, as right. it was called, um, saying that it was like throwing cash in a mud puddle. Yeah. What makes this different? Well, look, I, I thought that was the silliest thing uh, we could possibly consider. And let me say this, that was very popular with constituents. Mm -hmm. This thing I voted for recently was very unpopular with constituents. Um, the, the $168 billion truly was like dropping cash out of a helicopter. It was basically sending money to people, an undersaved citizenry, asking them to take these checks that we borrowed 100% from other people to send to them and asking them to spend it as quickly as possible to generate economic growth. I just thought that was ridiculous, okay? And by the way, that money is gone forever and generations after us will be called upon to pay that back. This is different. This is actually purchasing assets at discounted values, and if Treasury does this with any degree of prudence, we ought to get 100% of that money back plus a margin, plus a profit. All of that money comes back in to pay down the, the, uh, the national deficit. So to me, this is an investment. This is something that is solving a systemic problem that we have in this country. The other was a feel-good issue to me to make uh, people around this state and around the country think that we were doing something to help. I, I just, that's not what I went to Washington to do. And you've said if this money is invested well, we might even benefit from it. Absolutely. And uh, if we can keep the credit markets from seizing up, okay, uh, we can keep what I believe is going to be a recession regardless. I mean, I don't think this is something that's going to prevent a recession. We are, in my humble opinion, we are in a recession today, and we're going to be going deeper into recession. What it will do is keep that from being as deep as it might have been. Now, you admit that no piece of legislation is perfect and that this, too, has flaws. What can you tell us about that? Well, uh, the flaws are, look, we have a lot of taxpayer protections in here. If uh, the Treasury Secretary goes in and buys, uh, you know, directly from, from financial institutions these assets, instead of going through a reverse auction process where in act what you do is you sell these assets uh, by bidding the lowest, okay, that's a reverse auction. But if we go in and actually make direct purchases, we can take warrants in these companies. Uh, where we actually, the taxpayers can benefit as these companies improve in their standings, okay? Uh, we have some things in there to protect against golden parachutes, uh, where these executives uh, run a company in the ground and then they leave with millions of dollars. Uh, we have some oversight, but at the end of the day, uh, there's still going to be some human judgment involved in this. And whenever there's human judgment involved, there's going to be errors made. And I know that there'll be stories. You guys uh, here at Vol State will be doing uh, some episode, if you will, down the road about some of the things that occurred that shouldn't have, I know some of that's going to occur. Mm -hmm. And the fact is, uh, whenever human judgment's involved, that happens. And mm -hmm. that, in, in many ways, makes this bill not perfect. I mean, I'd like to... Uh, uh, look, if I were in the private sector today, I would strongly consider forming a fund to buy these assets because I think they're greatly devalued. They're still cash flowing. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a, there's a way for Treasury to benefit our taxpayers. I'd like to be a little bit more involved on, on a daily basis, as you will. I know that uh, that doesn't allow things to work properly to ensure there's proper transparency. Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a level of trust involved here. We don't know who the next Treasury Secretary is. I mean, Paulson leaves here on January the 20th, and so, you know, there's some fallacies in it, but I think we did the best that we could for this type of legislation.